At the military base in Saratov, the Russian troops began training on North Korean self-propelled artillery systems. Atesh Guerrilla Movement reports, according to the agent, Russian artillerymen have begun training on North Korean self-propelled artillery systems at the recently reopened Higher Artillery Command School in Saratov. This demonstrates that Russia cannot independently produce and repair its own heavy weapons in the required quantities, as well as the growing role of North Korea in Russia's war against Ukraine, the guerrillas stressed. Vladimir Putin's request for military assistance from Kim Jong-un in September 2023 was intercepted as a sign of Russian weakness. A year and a half after the invasion of Ukraine, the Russian leader was meeting the North Korean dictator at a cosmodrome in the Russian Far East to exchange favors. What seemed like a desperate measure, turning to one of the poorest and most isolated countries on the planet, was also logical. Pyongyang's huge Soviet-era arsenals could feed the Russian military machine. A year has passed since the North Korean ammunition shipment reported by Western intelligence services and Kim's regime is now essential to the Kremlin's war. In addition, Moscow and Pyongyang have sealed an alliance that includes a pact on mutual defense in case of aggression. Kim's contribution to the holy war against the West, as the North Korean leader called the invasion of Ukraine, is crucial above all because of the 122mm ammunition he has supplied for Russian howitzers. The Times reported citing intelligence sources within NATO member states that half of the shells fired by Russian artillery are of North Korean origin. The British newspaper specified that Pyongyang had supplied 3 million shells, fewer than the 5 million South Korea had estimated its northern enemy had transferred to Moscow. The Ukrainian government says the quality of this ammunition, which has been in storage for decades, is poor and often fails. Multiple Ukrainian drone attacks between September and October against Russian weapons depots have also decimated the invaders' artillery strength. Ukrainian Deputy Defense Minister Ivan Havriliuk said that if at the beginning of the year the superiority of Russian artillery was 8 to 1 today, it would be only 3 to 1. Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Shmihal said that same day that Ukrainian ammunition production had tripled and now accounted for half of that used by the armed forces. The State Duma of the Russian Federation ratified the treaty between the Russian Federation and the North Korea, which Putin and Kim Jong-un signed back in the summer of 2024. At the same time, it is unclear to what extent Pyongyang is ready to provide military assistance to the Russian Federation under this agreement. Ukrainian military expert Alexander Kovalenko says that Kim may provide Putin with engineering troops. Currently, the North Korea has 22 such brigades, but Kim is ready to provide Putin with three to four brigades. The Russian Federation has always lacked engineers, and they accompany the occupation forces both during the offensive and during the retreat. Since 2022, the enemy army has lost many military engineers. Engineers from the North Korea have extensive experience in constructing fortifications. However, such troops have not yet been seen in the occupied territory of Ukraine. It is also possible that Kim will send artillerymen to the Russian Federation. The most experienced troops in the North Korea are artillerymen. Today, there are 30 such brigades in the North Korea. The North Korean army is armed with both Soviet-era cannons and unique ones like the M1978 Koksan. OSINT analysts have not yet confirmed the presence of artillerymen from the North Korea in Ukraine. A more realistic picture is the transfer of infantrymen. They can be either in the rear or operate in the Kursk, Bryansk and Belgorod regions. For Putin, any help in the form of manpower is a big plus, since the Russian Federation already feels a shortage of reserves. Recruitment within the Russian Federation and around the world has not brought the Kremlin the expected result, so help in the form of 10,000 Kim soldiers is good help. Kovalenko is confident that in exchange for soldiers, Kim will want to receive access to military technology from Putin. The West's inaction over the past 10 years has already led to Pyongyang creating its own Cornets, Tochka US, and even ballistic missiles. If the West continues to ignore the growing threat of this tandem, it will lead to much worse consequences, which are becoming more difficult to prevent every day. Russia is currently training over 10,000 North Korean troops in the Far East, according to a source in the Ukrainian Defense Forces. According to the source, the North Korean military is being prepared for deployment to the border areas near Ukraine. 
They are also being trained to rotate Russian troops to free up their personnel, etc. The intelligence officers also believe that this battalion may be transferred not to Ukraine, but to strengthen the Russian group in the Kursk region to push out the Ukrainian armed forces units from there, which have been on Russian territory for more than two months. In the Kursk region, Russian commanders defended themselves with dragon's teeth because of fears of a breakthrough of the AFU on the highway. However, such a fence only complicated the movement of Russians, in particular the evacuation of the wounded and the flight from Ukrainian FPV drones. Russian Z blogger Sviatoslav Golikov wrote about this on Telegram to the philologist Ambush Channel, Focus reports. According to him, such barriers are installed Velikosoldatsky district in the Sudsa Kursk Highway, a dangerous area where enemy drones have already burned more than 50 vehicles, military and civilian. People are trying to slip through this section at high speeds. The other day, the dragon's teeth were secretly installed on the site. No alerts or warning signs. At speeds of 150 kilometers an hour, several cars flew in. There were dead and heavy casualties. Comrades working in the Sujan direction tore down these teeth to hell. But the next day, the situation repeated itself. Again, unexpected teeth, broken cars, several dead and several people in intensive care. The blogger was indignant. He said that such actions are similar not to the work of the leadership, but to Ukrainian sabotage and reconnaissance groups. You can't put a post on a site. It is stupidly smashed by drones. Alerts and warning signs could save you situationally, but now the dragon's teeth on the highway are not an option. The highway is actively working, and at the same time people are forced to fly along it. The blogger wrote, he was outraged that the losses from such barriers in this area are greater than from FPV drones. He also added that the other day a well-known volunteer crashed into the teeth there on his car. He was not injured, but he lost his car. In another Russian telegram channel, Troika, it was reported that 40 Russian soldiers had already died because of the dragon's teeth. At night in the Kursk region, an unknown SRG exposes the dragon's teeth in the rear on the evacuation routes along which cars rush from FPV drones at 150 km an hour without any identification marks. More than 40 people died in just one day. The same number of people are injured. There are more accidents in an hour than FPV knocks out in a week.